a recent Islamic rally outside Istanbul's Bayezid Mosque in Turkey. The occasion was to protest events in Algeria, but the message on the banners was more universal. The Islamic movement is unstoppable, they claim. And indeed, the radical fundamentalists amongst Turkey's Muslim population do seem to be posing an increasing threat to the existing order there. But politically, Turkey is not yet comparable to Egypt or Algeria, even though Islamic fundamentalists have made surprising gains in recent months. What's being questioned by radical Muslims is the Western leanings of their secular administration. Istanbul is a city of 10 million people, which each year adds a further 350,000 from the countryside. The multi-ethnic atmosphere of old Constantinople is rapidly being overwhelmed by these newcomers. Byzantium was notable for its non-Muslim minorities, but only 2,000 ethnic Greeks, 23,000 Jews and 60,000 Armenians are now left. But there's still some ethnic diversity, and so far, a fair degree of religious tolerance. It's been a policy of live and let live. This is the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate in Istanbul. The ecumenical patriarch is Bartholomew I. But although such scenes speak of a sense of tradition and continuity, the reality is that Turkey is facing its worst economic and political crisis for decades. And it's a crisis which profoundly threatens the stability of this ancient society. The Islamic Welfare Party has long campaigned to convert the Hagia Sophia into a mosque. It happened to this Byzantine church in the 16th century. The church of St. Saviour in Hora is another Byzantine church converted into a mosque at that time. But whether or not there's any danger of religious purges, it's undeniable that Islam is still increasing in Istanbul. The number of new mosques under construction is just one indicator of the vast influx of Muslims from rural areas. Most of them espouse more conservative and traditional values than their city counterparts. And there's growing anxiety amongst some Turks that their culture might be undermined by Western habits. The pro-Islamic welfare party is increasingly seen as a potential bulwark against such trends. Its key line has been that it stands outside the current political system representing an alternative solution known as the just order. Now its intense organization at the street and community level is beginning to pay dividends. At solidarity meetings like this one organized by the women's branch of the welfare party, the importance of adherence to Islamic cultural values is emphasized. In spite of being unable to define how the just order fits in with Islamic Sharia law, Welfare Party candidate Tayyip Erdogan managed to sweep into power in the local elections to become mayor of Istanbul. <laughs> Polls leading up to the recent elections had the Welfare Party lying second or third, but Erdogan succeeded in confounding his critics. This, despite allegations of the party's links with Saudi Arabia and a virulent anti-welfare campaign from the secularist media. Erdogan is on record as saying that if Pierre Cardin pronounced the Shador fashionable, the women of the world would wear it. It seems that Erdogan would like to bring Muslim culture back into fashion. Kemal Ataturk, founder of the modern Turkish Republic in 1923, is the villain of the piece, according to the fundamentalists. It was he that abolished Arabic script and canonical Islamic law. He took the Ottoman Empire, known as the poor man of Europe, and transformed it into a secular state on the Western model where politics were to be separate from religion. This conference, organized by the substantial Turkish community in Germany, made their views on Ataturk clear. Cemaletin Kaplan, their self-proclaimed leader, is living in Germany. 
He's regarded as a potential Ayatollah Khomeini figure by militant Muslims there. But the recent respect for Ataturk rally in Istanbul took a different view. The rally was staged in response to a comment by a radical welfare party member of parliament that Ataturk was a bastard whose mother was a prostitute. Thousands flocked to defend Ataturk's name and honor, including the deputy prime minister and prime minister Tansu Chila. The reality is that the welfare party is not the most popular party in Turkey, although recent elections showed a surprising number of voters rallying to their flag but they have managed to broaden their mass appeal. They certainly managed to send shockwaves rippling through the Turkish establishment in the wake of the Welfare Party victory in the mayoral elections in Istanbul recently. An estimated 6,000 supporters were on hand to cheer newly elected mayor Tayyip Erdogan, who appeared hand in hand with RP leader Nechmedin Erbakan before addressing the assembled multitudes. It remains to be seen whether Erdogan's success can be duplicated on a national level. But there's no doubt that the fundamentalists have scored a victory significant enough to make Turkey take notice.